Hi, I'm Troy from Studio 33 Guitar. Thanks for watching. Today we're having a look at how to play I Feel It Coming by The Weeknd. This is a really catchy song. It's fun to play. Not too difficult. It only has five chords in it, but it might be a little bit more on the intermediate side than a real beginner song. The chords that they use are a little bit trickier than basic beginner chords, and the strumming pattern might be a little bit trickier. But I'll break it down and try and simplify it a bit so even if you are a beginner, you should be able to pick up this song without too much trouble. To play this song in the original key like the recording, you will need to use a capo and you'll put that capo on the third fret. Now if you don't have a capo, you can still play this song and you can use these exact same chord shapes, just everything will be moved down three frets and you'll be playing in the traditional open position. Now if you're playing that way, it won't sound right if you try and play along with the recording because you'll be in a different key. But if you're just wanting to sing it at home, you can easily play it that way. Or if you find that this song is a little bit too high to sing, you can use those open chords in a lower position to make it more suitable for your voice. So you can start with the capo on the third fret. If that's a little high, you can move it down one fret and then just move your hand down one fret as well. Try that, if it's still too high, move it down another fret and so on until you find a key that's comfortable for your voice. And don't forget to check out studio33guitar.com for more great lessons. But for now, let's zoom in on the neck and have a look at how to play I Feel It Coming. As I mentioned, we have our capo on the third fret and we only need five chords. So let's have a look at those first. The first chord you're gonna need is an E minor chord. So you can play an E minor like this. So you're only playing these two notes or you can use those same two notes but use these two fingers and for this song, I suggest that this might be a little bit better because the following chord is an A minor chord, which these two fingers need to drop down one string each. So you could play it this way if you prefer that way of playing an E minor chord, but for this song, I do recommend playing it this way. After that E minor chord, you're gonna to go to an A minor chord. So like I said, these two fingers just drop straight down. And now we're gonna add in the index finger on the B string on that first fret. And that gives us our A minor chord. The next chord that we need is an F major chord. And we can leave our index finger right where it is. And we're gonna move our other fingers up like this. So our ring finger is going on the third fret, pinky finger directly below that. Our middle finger is one string down and then one fret back. And then again, our index finger is right where we left it. You have a few different options with this F major chord. If you want, you can play just the four notes that your fingers are on, or you can use your index finger to bar across those two notes. So you'll have more of a full F major chord like that. You could also play it as an F major bar chord if you wanted to, but with the, with the positions of these other chords, it's probably easier to just play it more like this. So you can also have this high E string ring open, which will actually give you an F major seven chord. But I like the sound of that chord in this context because all four of these chords actually will use that open E string. And having that one note ring out for all four chords just pulls the chords together and helps them connect a little bit nicer. And the last chord that we need for the verse section and also for the chorus section is a C major chord. So from this F chord, all we're gonna do is leave our ring finger right where it is. We're gonna lift our pinky finger off and we're just gonna move our middle finger up one string. And again, we're leaving that index finger where it is. And that gives us a C major. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I always break this down and we talk about where the chord changes are first before we talk about the strumming pattern. because so we need to know when we're changing chords before we worry about what kind of a strum we're gonna put on them. So each of these chords gets one bar. So that means we're gonna be counting to four for each of these chords. And that's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four four, one, two, three, four. 
Now you can hear how that high E string was ringing out for all four of those chords. And you can see how that kind of connects those chords together. This would also be a good way to start the song as the intro where it's a little bit more open and airy sounding. You could play each of these chords like that with just one strum for each to give it a little bit of more of an open feel for the intro. If you're a beginner and you're not quite ready for the more complicated strum pattern that we're about to get into, let's take a look at a simplified version first. So you could just give each chord a down strum on every beat, which would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, to make it a little bit more interesting, we can add in an upstroke at the end of each of those bars. And that would sound like this. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. Now let's look at a strumming pattern that's a little bit more complicated, but it's one that I think fits well with this song. So let's have a closer look at this. Now I often talk about strumming patterns and how we use quarter notes and eighth notes and 16th notes and how we count it that way. But for this strumming pattern, it's a little bit more complicated. There's a lot going on. So we're just gonna talk about downs and ups. So what I was doing for this pattern would look like this. Now I'm just gonna break this into two parts. So the first part that you need would go like this. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, down. A little bit more up to speed. Now the second part is just a little bit we're going to add to the end of that. We're going to give it one more down up. So that's going to be like this. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up. Down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up. I'll bring that all up to speed. And you can use that exact same strum pattern throughout the entire song, the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus. Now let's have a look at the chords that we use in the pre-chorus. The pre-chorus is very similar to the verse and the chorus with the exception of one more chord. But it starts with the A minor chord this time. We're playing that for one bar, so a count of four. Again, we can use that same strumming pattern that we just learned. And then we're gonna go to an E minor so just move those two fingers up, take the index finger off. So it's kind of the opposite of what we did earlier. From E minor, we're gonna to go to a D minor. So a D minor might be a newer chord for you. It's very similar to a D major chord, which looks like that, which if you're a beginner, you probably know how to play that chord. A D minor chord, all we're gonna do is move this note back one fret to make it D minor but it's difficult to get our middle finger to go back. So what we do is we move our index finger down there and then put our middle finger where the index finger was. And now we start with the open D string and then follow through with the other notes. And that gives us a D minor. After that D minor chord, we're going back to that C major chord that we were playing earlier. So the pre-chorus section would sound like this. And that chord progression for the pre-chorus is played two times through and then you're on to the chorus. And the chorus is played exactly the same as the verse. 
There's a couple of simple but cool sounding things that you can do with these chords to make them sound a little bit more interesting. Let's have a look at that. I'll play it through once here first so you can hear a few things that you can do. So for those chords, I was just adding in a couple of little embellishments. So we start with that E minor chord. Partway through, I was adding in my pinky finger on this note, which actually makes it an E minor 7 chord. So I was putting that basically in the second half of the bar. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4. But with that strumming pattern, it would sound like this. From there, I was going to the A minor chord, but I was putting these two fingers down first and then hammering down the index finger. So that sounded like this. And then when I went to the F major chord, I did a similar thing with the middle finger. And then I did the same thing again with the C major chord with that middle finger. And then the first time through, I did a couple of quick ones. So again, that whole thing together with those little tricks would sound like this. So you can add those in if you just want to change things up a little bit, make it sound a little bit different. I like to use that in the chorus of the song. So I leave the verse kind of more simple, and then we go to the pre-chorus, then we get to the chorus, kind of add in some of those embellishments just to kind of differentiate between the verse and the chorus. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope that you found that useful and that you're able to play this song without any problem. If you did like it, then please let us know by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment down below. And if there's other songs that you'd like to learn that we haven't covered yet, you can leave that down in the comment section below as well, and we'll try to get to those. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.